two different gradients. We're talking about an electrical gradient and a chemical gradient. So an electrical gradient is separation of charge. A chemical gradient is high to low concentrations. Okay? Um, all of these forces are uh, lead up to potential energy. If you look at the picture, you can see that outside the cell, the thoughts represent the concentration. So sodium is really high outside the cell, and potassium is low outside the cell. Sodium is low inside, and potassium is high inside. Okay? Um, and so we have the separation of particles, and this ultimately leads to different charges, or a distribution of charge, um, inside and outside. And um, we can do work from that. Take a look at the concentration of these guys, just to give you an idea. Um. Um, these ions, the concentration are in millimoles per liter. So sodium extracellularly is the highest. So sodium has 150 millimolar concentration, whereas chlor uh, potassium on the inside is the highest. It has 150 millimolar inside. We're going to focus mainly on sodium and potassium because they're the major players when we talk about uh, movement and action potentials. We're not going to really focus on chloride and A, or um, negative proteins inside the cell. So these guys, the chloride ions and the proteins, the negative protein, they sort of balance inside and outside the cell. And we're not going to worry about that. <clears throat> okay, and the electrical gradient develops when there's more positive on the inside or outside. Can you give me an example? Um, let's say we have three positives here, and we have two positives here. Which side has more positive charges? The Outside the cell. Okay? Which one is relatively negative? Inside. inside. So we can say inside is relatively negative, outside is relatively, or it is positive. Um, if you have a positive ion out here, which way is it going to want to go towards? Is it going to want to stay outside uh, positive, or is it going to be attracted to the inside? It's the opposite negative. charge. The opposite inside. charge, right? So it's going to want to go inside? Inside the cell. Okay. Because so it's relatively negative? Relatively negative. You have more positive on the outside versus inside. Even in the event when they're that close, right? Like three to two kind of, it still wants to move that way? Um, and so basically, what you're going to do is you're going to create positive charge on the outside, negative charge on the inside. And since we're dealing with ions, let's say it puts sodium ion and chlor uh, potassium ion, these guys are going to be pulled in different directions based on their electrical gradient, based on what charges are inside, what charges are outside, and their concentration. So I'm just breaking electrical gradient down first, and then chemical gradient. Um, okay, so ions are going to want to move towards the area of opposite charge, right? Positive ions are going to want to move to the side that's more negative. Um, negative ions are going to want to move to the side that's more positive. A chemical gradient is different. We've already dealt with chemical gradients. Uh, when we talked about diffusion, diffusion of a molecule occurs from where it's highest to where it's lowest, right? So a chemical gradient means there's a concentration, a high concentration and a low concentration. And this molecule or this ion is going to move from where it's high to where it's low, okay? Let's say there's a lot of, do you guys remember where sodium was the highest? Outside. Outside the cell? Okay, which way is sodium going? Based on its concentration. The lower concentration. So it's going to move from high to low. So it's going to want to move in, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So based on its concentration gradient, it's going to want to move into the cell. Based on its electrical gradient, which way is it going to want to move? Outside. Positive right. charge. It's going to want to move The negative. The negative side, which is inside. Inside. Okay. So sodium has two driving forces, right? Sodium is going to want to go in based on its concentration gradient, and it's going to want to go in based on its charge. Um, let's look at potassium. Uh, potassium is high. 
the negative. Okay. okay. So, if sodium and potassium could move in or out of the cell, which one would move the fastest? Oh. Sodium. Why do you think that? Because there's more of it outside? The two forces that you have are an electrical it's force and a chemical force. Because the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient are both going in the same direction. For potassium, the concentration gradient is pulling it out. The charge gradient is pulling it in. So they're opposite in opposite directions. Oh, so it's more opposite. positively charged with potassium inside. With sodium, it's more positively charged outside. Mm, no. Potassium is a plus one, okay. right? It's going to be attracted to the negative inside because it's a positive ion. It's okay. going to be attracted to the negative. Okay. Right? So based on its charge, it's going to want to go in. But you also had said that it's, there's more sodium outside. Don't worry about that right now. Okay. Based on its concentration, there's more potassium inside versus outside. So it wants to go outside. So I'm just trying to get you guys to understand that there's two driving forces for ions to move. One is its concentration gradient and one is its charge. Okay, if these guys could move, which one would move the fastest? Sodium would. Why? Because both forces are in the same direction, pulling sodium into the cell. Okay? Um, so, the electrochemical gradient in an excitable cell is set up by our sodium potassium pump. What does our sodium potassium pump do again, guys? It pumps the uh, sodium. It transports blood. Transports sodium, sodium and potassium. And here's my pump. How many sodium out? Three sodium out. And how many potassium in? Two. Two. Can you guys see that all the way back there? Yeah, I can. Yeah. I know. They did, did a very good job when they designed the lighting in this room. Mm -hmm. It like goes right in front of the board, and then the board's a large. They got two that are out, too. They put them out so that you can actually see this area. Huh. So they didn't do a very good job. But whatever. So here's our sodium potassium pump. It's going to pump three sodium out and two K in. What does it need to do that? ATP. It needs ATP, okay? So if it needs ATP, is it passive or active transport? Active. It's active. So if it's pumping sodium out, and it's active, where is sodium the highest? Outside. Outside the side. Okay. Go ahead. I thought you said that the sodium one is still the other side. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. So it's pumping three sodium out and two K in. So we know that there's a lot of sodium outside, right? What about inside? Um, what about potassium? Where is potassium highest? If we're pumping two K in. And what about outside? Lower. positives and it's pumping in two positives. So 
here's our three positives, and here's our two positives, right? Um, which side is more positive? The outside. The outside. And since the inside has less positives, we can say that it's negative relative to the outside. Okay, so this is how we get our negative and positive. We have three sodium being pumped out for two potassium being pumped in. Because there's less positive charges on the inside, that means it's negative relative to outside. Okay. So negative inside, positive outside, high sodium outside, low sodium inside, high potassium inside, low potassium outside. Where does this guy get the sodium and the potassium to pump? From its surroundings, like its environment? I don't know. Okay. From the inside, from the outside. So basically, this pump, as long as ATP is present, will pump sodium out and potassium in. <clears throat> Three sodium, two 